And because they came from God, he has given to us. When we are giving, we are just giving what he has given us. And we are just giving back to him. That's the concept that we need to remember. He is saying, who are we that we should give willingly like this? So on the how of giving, when you give to your friends and to God in church, how should we give? Willingly. Did you hear that? Here, Solomon and the children of Israel, they are saying, God, who are we to give you? you everything that we are giving you, you gave to us. When you begin to think that way, to say, all that I have, God gave me, you will have no trouble giving. Children, when we give you and we want to share with you, please don't develop that uh, stinginess where you think that all is yours. You want all the things to be yours. We always want to get. That is the nature of a human being. But Solomon and the children of Israel, they realized in 1 Chronicles 29 to say, God, all that we have, it's you who gave to us. And we are coming to give willingly to you. So when you give to your friends, give willingly. The Bible says, God loves a cheerful giver. You must give cheerfully. You must give willingly. Amen. Because giving is living. And you ask all the people that uh, do work in life and help in charities and everything. When they give willingly, there is something that uh, God has just put in us. When you give willingly and joyfully, even the people receiving, they appreciate. Parents, can I have a word with you? When you give, don't give and then uh, you follow words. Uh, I don't know whether this has happened to you. This is the last time I'm giving you. <laughs> Let's give cheerfully. Of course we can caution, don't destroy this. This thing is very expensive. Can you imagine if God gave us Mama Mansa and said, this is the last time I'm giving you my life. <laughs> if you mess up next week, you have no life. How many people are going to leave? Richard, if God comes to you and says, Richard, this is the last time I'm giving you life. If you don't look after yourself properly, you are no more but next man. No, God is so gracious. He has given us graciously yeah. and when we receive it let's also give willingly so when you come to the house of our Lord, the children of Israel were reminded when you receive please remember the Lord your God it is him who gives us strength to make wealth and we should give willingly for we are aliens and the pilgrimage uh, pilgrims on this earth as all our fathers were, they came, they are gone. Our days on earth are numbered. Our days on earth are like a shadow and without hope. Oh Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have presented to build your house for your holy name is from your hand. Amen. So they were building the house for the Lord. But the year I say, what we are giving you came from you. So children, when your parents are helping you and giving you things, don't look down upon your parents. Why? Because they are giving to you. And all of us, we are just like children to God. He's always giving us. He's always thinking about us. I want you to know, when you give, in this, uh, and I'll read maybe the last scripture, and then we'll be done. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 11, 24. Proverbs 11, 24, and that will be our last scripture today. Or maybe one more, Matthew 6, 38 as well. We'll combine these two. 
Proverbs 11, 24. Proverbs 11, 24. Msama, we haven't heard your voice in a long time. And uh, would you please read it uh, for us? Proverbs 11, 24. Jeanette, can you also put a finger on uh, Matthew 6, 38? Proverbs 11, 24. Yes, sir, uh, system summer. Uh, Proverbs 11, 24. Hear these words. Hear these words. Because the world is telling us something. Don't give so you can get rich. But what does the word of God say? Proverbs 11, 24. Yes, please. So people spend their money freely and still grow richer. Others are cautious and yet grow poorer. Be, gener be generous and you, will be, and you will be prosperous. Help others and you will be helped. Amen. Amen. Did you hear those words? Some people, they spend or they give and yet they get richer and richer. But some people, they want to hold to what they have. What happens? They get poorer. Mm. Can you see that? Mm. It, it doesn't make sense. In the world we are living in, they are telling you, don't give. Hold on to what you have. We are living in difficulty times. But God says, give and you shall get prosperous. My version says, uh, same scripture, Proverbs uh, chapter number 1124. Hopefully I can get uh, a comparison uh, uh, scripture. What does this one say? One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Do you know what the Bible is saying? They give what they have, but they become more richer. So they are not worried that I'm not giving. Say one person gives freely and they become or grow richer. Another person withholds what he should give. What happens to them? They suffer lack. They become poor. The world tells you don't give because you'll be poorer if you give, if you share. But God says give and you get richer. What a paradox. That's how it works with God. Give and it shall be given to you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So this scripture teaches us. You give freely, you grow richer. Do you know how to get money? Be a giver. Amen. I'm not saying this uh, because I've read in a book. I am saying this as something that I've experienced. When I give, when I go out to do charity work, the favor of God that I receive is just amazing. I sometimes I ask my question and my kids sometimes uh, uh, they, 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 they question me. There are times I'm expecting some money. I don't think of uh, how I'm going to spend on myself. Sometimes I find it very weird. I begin to think, who should I give? Where is the next project? And between Elias and Shekana, there are two different people. Shekana will ask you for a 10 pound. Elias will ask you for 50 pounds. And she has already calculated. She was calculating, Daddy, when we went for Shekana's birthday, she spent 126 or something. She had to calculate, I don't know how she came up with that. <laughs> when we ask Shekana to say, what do you want? Shekana will tell you, ah, oh, buy me anything, not with ideas that she will calculate. And tell you, this will not be enough for this and that. And I'm thinking, God have mercy. Chine, read for us. The last scripture, Matthew 6:38, and we are done. Giving is living. We must be givers. Yes, please. Matthew chapter number 6, 38. Uh, Matthew 6. Uh, the scripture I'm looking for is give and it shall be given to you. 
Let me just check. Uh, Matthew chapter... Uh, let's see. Give and it shall be given unto you. Uh, sorry, uh, Luke, not Matthew. Luke 638. Luke 638. Luke 638. Yeah, let's go to Luke 638. Uh, you can give it up on the screen. 638. Yeah, read it out for us. Luke 638 says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For when the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Wow. Did you hear that? That's the scripture we are ending with. Give and it shall be given. Let's paraphrase that. Don't give. <laughs> yes, Pastor Bonfess. Don't give. You won't receive, it will not be given. And we heard a catchphrase, who doesn't want to receive. Give and it shall be given. How? Good measure. Who doesn't like a good measure? When they are giving you and they are asking you, how much do you want? <laughs> Such questions are very difficult. How much do you want us? The Bible says good measure. And the good measure of God is really good. If the employer says, how much do you want us to increase or pay you? You begin to think, uh, are you sure? <laughs> good measure. Pressed down. Wow, what a giving. He says, we want to give you, have you got enough room? Those who used to go to the markets, Sister Charity, Mama Mwanza, Sister Linda, you go to Kinshasa, and then you go to this big market, lovely market, and then they are using this measure, and then you are saying, please measure it properly. <laughs> Press it down. Keep pushing it down so that I get enough. When you are going to some other countries, they will ask you, we only need 23 kgs. But people have got a way of getting more than 23. Sometimes what is called hand luggage. <laughs> I've been to the airport and I'm kicking myself. Is this what I got in my backpack and luggage? I turn around and see my neighbors coming into the plane. And I'm thinking, is that a hand luggage? <laughs> there are people that know how to get a good measure. Pressed down. Shall people give into your lap? With the same measure you use, people will use that. Jene, if I give you a pound according to that scripture, how much will I receive? A pound. If I give more, what will I expect? More. Emias, you need to learn to give more so you can receive more. Eliezer, you need to learn to give more so you can receive more. Amen. Let's all stand as we pray. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken, shall men or people give back to you. Let's pray.